Hi, this is overview video on chapter 9. Chapter 9, Current and Resistance, is the first of the two chapters on DC circuit. It covers a lot of conceptual ideas and one or two important formulas that you will be using throughout your circuit analysis, chapter 9 and 10, and also the time-dependent and AC circuit. So, some of the conceptual ideas include introduction to electrical current. Some of you might get this intuitively, but in any case, skim through the material, make sure you understand it. Sometimes understanding current can be a little bit tricky. So I will have a series of lecture videos to just to cover this. And the other important conceptual idea is model of conduction in metals. I won't really test you on some of these materials like how the current flow is expressed in terms of charge density and drift velocity. But the way in which this is useful is in helping you understand Ohm's law later. Now, Ohm's law is what defines resistance and resistivity. Um, I actually prefer to start from resistance and then work backward to resistivity to give this material a read through. This is a good introduction to the microscopic description of resistance. But um, do watch my lecture videos on the resistance and how that relates to resistivity. And this section also contains a table of values that's useful to develop some of your intuitions. For example, silver is the most conductive metal we know, and copper is fairly close, and given it's cheaper than silver, it's used more often. And some of the materials are surprisingly low in conductivity. Steel is one of the least conductive metals we have. And of course, all these non-metals don't conduct very well, I guess I didn't actually know carbon was considered a semiconductor. Um, and the conductivity becomes very small or resistivity becomes very high on all these insulators. Now, the one or two things that are very important in this chapter. The most important thing is Ohm's law. It's a very simple law and in fact, I always like to put square quotes around law in Ohm's law because it's not a fundamental law. There are materials that don't obey Ohm's law. What Ohm's law says is a general observation that for a lot of materials, current is proportional to the voltage applied. And we use this to define resistance actually experimentally. The reason this is important is this is a ubiquitous tool in circuit analysis. In a circuit analysis, what you have is you have a set of dynamical quantities in the circuit given. And what you are trying to do is, with the given rules, try to figure out what other unknown dynamical quantities are. Typical of many problem solving in physics. And Ohm's law is useful because it relates current and voltage to each other through this simple relationship. And we are actually going to introduce other relationship that's modeled after Ohm's law. So if you are going to do any work in circuit, either in this class or later in your career, I'll just tell you now, uh, it's very easy to underestimate Ohm's law, but this is one of the most important things you will learn as far as the circuits go in this class. Now, the second thing that is important is electrical energy and power. It's uh, uh, just useful for daily life. And it's important in that um, there are a number of expressions and it's good for you to know which is more useful when. It's better to think of electric power in this way. Power is equal to current times voltage. And I will have a separate lecture video. It's uh, uh, easy to see from the definitions of current and voltage why this relates to power, rate of change of energy. And in the circuit context, we can rewrite this in terms of resistance. And we write both of these expressions because in different contexts, different expression is more useful. And some expression is more deceiving. I will try to cover all those in the lecture video. So those are the two most important things in chapter 9. Um, chapter 9 also covers superconductors, which is very 
interesting material and if you think you might do um, solid state physics or condensed matter physics research this is I would tell you is a very exciting topic they're still continuing research into high temperature superconductors and but all of this is too much for this class so this is optional uh, you won't have any homework questions or exam questions that relate to superconductors in a way that I'm not giving you all the necessary information. So that's all. Um, there are lecture videos posted, so please do take a look at it. Until next time, bye.